to LARD TV where we are here looking once again at the forces included within the main infamy rules and today it's the turn of the Caesarean Romans. Um, first thing I guess one should point out is that these were troops who were there fighting in the time of Caesar, they don't necessarily fight for Caesar, in fact some of them could be fighting for Pompey in the civil war that uh, occurred. Um, interesting force, the uh, Caesarian Roman force, extremely well drilled uh, typically, uh, but uh, not as numerous as one tended to find in the imperial period. Uh, also they don't have organised auxilia fighting with them, they're tending to use a lot more allied tribes uh, and different groups uh, so you are not really seeing the Romans having their sort of light infantry that you would get in an early imperial force with the auxiliar troops, which complements beautifully the uh, legionaries. These guys here are going to be largely legionaries and then using foreign allies, uh, although the term foreign probably is not particularly relevant at uh, uh, 55 BC. OK, let's have a look at the units. Uh, as we can see, the Romans are in eights, which is probably what you've uh, come to expect, um, uh, as that you know, is typically the size of uh, civilised forces. Most of their infantry allies are potentially going to be in tens uh, if they are warriors, and uh, in sixes if they are skirmishers. Uh, there is an exception for the Caesarian Romans in that the Spanish uh, Catrati are organised in eights. Uh, Spanish are making a bit of a guest appearance in the main rules. Um, we're going to be covering them fully in the first supplement, which is going to be covering Greek and Carthage, uh, Carthaginian uh, armies. Um, but uh, we obviously wanted to get them in here because they were a big, uh, important part of Caesar's forces in Gaul. Um, so uh, and all and also uh, took part in the um, in the civil war with Pompey. Um, so the uh, Catrati come in uh, uh, eights um, and are very much um, light infantry troops. So it, these, if you like, are the prototype auxilia that we are going to see later, although pretty lightly armed. But they, they do qualify as uh, warriors with mixed drills, so they can skirmish and fight as warriors as well, which is uh, always a good thing to have. Uh, so uh, cavalry uh, that we see here with a unit of Spanish cavalry are in sixes. All cavalry are in sixes, whether they're skirmish cavalry or uh, mounted warriors. Um, and the other thing that we need to look at are our uh, ambush points and deployment points. You don't need or get a lot of these um, with the Romans, but uh, and, and in fact the Roman legionaries can't use them, but... Uh, their allied tribal uh, friends can. Uh, so, um, uh, and, and if nothing else, they're important for um, negating potential threats of enemy troops uh, by occupying some terrain. So there we have it. Um, <clears throat> you can see that uh, these here are actually on 60 mil bases. Uh, I've done two of them in a pretty neutral format with... Um, uh, no particular uh, kit on the Romans, but you can see we've got the Romans here with um, allied uh, uh, tribal scouts or um, prisoners. And this one here we can see is actually um, one really designed for the imperial period, but um, 
I'm going to use it uh, if I have to as a third one for the, the Republican period as well because uh, I haven't got around to making another one yet. So there we are. That's kind of what our base uh, unit sizes are going to be. Uh, let's have a look at three of the three types of caesarean forces that we got in the book. Now, the first one is very much the classic uh, case of Julius Caesar fighting the Gauls or the Aquitani or the Belgae uh, and uh, moving on then to the Britons uh, after that. And you can see there that we've got a centurion with two groups of uh, legionnaires, legionaries, um, and you've got an optio with two groups of Italian legion recruits. Now, recruits potentially sums up the idea of completely raw troops. These troops aren't raw, they've been well drilled, um, uh, but they, they don't uh, have quite the same tactical edge that the Roman legionaries do. Um, but they're, they're certainly not bad troops. Caesar had to send away a lot uh, to get supplementary uh, recruits in order to pursue his campaigns in Gaul, and that's represented in this force. Alongside them, you've got one group of Greek uh, slingers, six figures there because they are tribal allies, as uh, we touched on with the Imperials. It's only when we go into the Auxilia that they're organised in eights like the Romans. Um, and then we've got a Gallic leader, status two, and a group of six Gallic cavalry. Now, these guys are fairly well armoured and uh, can pack a punch. OK, let's have a look at our second force. Now, the second force here is going to be Romans with their Numidian allies. Now, they could be operating in Gaul um, alongside Caesar, or they could be uh, troops of Pompey in Spain or in North Africa. Uh, no um, recruits here, although they are going to be available when we have a look at the support options. Um, but we've got three groups of legionaries. We've got one group of six Numidian cavalry with a supernumerary leader, and we've got one group of six Numidian skirmishers. Now, what you'll notice is that four of those figures are actually on a base with um, uh, the cavalry. This is a Sabo base available from war bases, and this is to reflect the foot cavalry nature of these troops. Some troops operating with... Um, operating with uh, cavalry from the same contingent can operate very closely together with them and the infantry grasping the mane of the horse and using the cavalry to allow them to move very, very rapidly about the battlefield. And then the two can uh, serve to operate together and support each other uh, when they fight. And you can see here with this force, it's a relatively small force. One of the good things about this is that you, you're probably going to get a, a lot of choice in terms of support options that you take. Um, so that would be a, a Roman force with the new Midian allies. Here now we're going to have a look at the third force, which is what we call a Romano-Iberian force. Uh, this is very much uh, Romans operating with Spanish allies. Um, nice thing about the Spaniards is you're going to be able to use them with or against the Carthaginians when we release the uh, second supplement, or the first supplement, the second book in the series. And you can see here we've got three groups of legionaries again. They have got a centurion and an optio. The groups are in eights. And the Iberian uh, troops that are allied to them, you've got a group of eight Catarati, um, these troops are possibly some of the best light troops of the Caesarean period, hence they are in eights. They operate a lot more like Roman later Roman auxilia, um, and uh, they are good troops. They can operate as foot cavalry with the Iberian Spanish horse, who you can see to the rear, and those cavalry have got a uh, status to lead or with them, and a group of slingers. So that's quite a punchy force um, because those uh, Catrati are very good um, troops indeed. And um, as I say, they can operate very rapidly on the battlefield by twinning up with the Spanish cavalry. So what 
type of support can our Caesarean Roman forces select? Um, they've actually got very good selection. Um, you've obviously got the Roman legionaries who you can duplicate. You can have Italian and Spanish legion recruits. Um, you could have the Vacati, who are the veteran legionaries, um, who maybe have been uh, recalled to the colours or are right at the end of their period of service. You could have Balearic slingers, um, who uh, were famous for their uh, uh, abilities. You can have the Iberian Catrati. Uh, you can have uh, Gallic warriors. Uh, these could be Celto-Iberians in, uh, in Spain, or you could have Gauls themselves in, uh, if you're operating in Gaul or going over to Britain. You could have Roman cavalry, um, <clears throat> who are always um, slightly dubious, um, but uh, nevertheless, that's an option. You can have the Numidian cavalry, uh, Spanish cavalry, uh, Numidian slingers, and allied Gallic cavalry, who are going to be some of the best cavalry that the uh, Romans can have um, with their um, uh, medium armour and well-organised mounted warriors. And you could have Germanic cavalry and obviously support weapons that I tend to always forget, the scorpion, um, which is there always available. So there's lots and lots of choice that you can use. Once again, you do want to fi uh, find yourself utilising tribal uh, allies because they will be your eyes and ears if you're operating in enemy territory. Uh, so very much something that uh, it's important to uh, have a look at. Uh, so that tells us pretty much what forces you're going to need for the Caesarian Romans. As I say, they kind of have a lot of flexibility in there with who they can fight um, and a lot of flexibility in terms of the support options they take, which I think makes them a really very, very interesting and enjoyable force to game with and really quite different feel to the Imperial uh, Romans. So um, the other support options they're going to be able to take are things like uh, scouts, uh, who don't actually appear on the table, but help them identify enemy ambush points and deployment points. You can have a Cas um, Capsarius, who is the Roman battlefield combat medic. Um, you can have musicians. You could have a mule train, uh, and you could have the scorpion. You could have an engineering group with a cart. The Romans have got a lot of potential if they're in entrenched positions to take supports, uh, such as having ditches dug with... Um, sharp stakes in them, lilies, as, as Caesar referred to them. Um, so a lot of flexibility in terms of the way they build themselves up um, as a force to be gained with. So there we go. That's, have a look at, that's us having a look at the um, Caesarian Romans. We hope you found that of interest. We're going to come back very shortly with our Gauls, who I think are really a totally unique force and really very very interesting to game with so we're going to have a look at those uh, and uh, we'll be back soon with that if you've got any questions just leave them below we'll try and get them answered um, and in the meantime keep enjoying your gaming and tune in on large tv to see what we're up to <laughs>